are with Chris and Joel talking about their new book, Polyface Designs. And, and Chris is the brains of the outfit. Just so everybody knows right up front, Chris yes, is the brains exactly. of the outfit. Just clear it out of the way. <laughs> if you want to build exactly like Joel Salton, you got to go through Chris. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Amazing book. So, <laughs> we're going to go around the farm and look at some of the more popular structures. Homestead friendly, uh, market farm friendly. Joel is a market farmer. This can be scaled down. This can be scaled up. So this is going to be one of the more popular ones, I think. So can you tell, just kind of give us a tour of one of these uh, pastured poultry pen and maybe give us an idea of inputs and outputs, if you don't mind. Sure. So the, shel the shelter is, um, is 10 feet by 12 feet, uh, 10 feet wide, 12 feet long, and two feet high. The reason it's that dimension is because you can make it smaller, but it's the same effort to move one small as move one big. If you make it bigger, then you start getting into too much weight. So the whole, the whole goal here is to have something that's so portable that it's actually fun to move. The, the single biggest um, uh, whatever uh, uh, problem that people encounter duplicating this is they make them too heavy. Either by using dimension lumber that's too big or um, or material set of aluminum using steel all this adds weight and then it's not fun uh, yeah, then you get it's not fun so the whole idea is light enough to not blow away and predators to dig under but heavy enough heavy enough that it won't blow away and light enough that you can move it that's the idea and so um, maybe I should move one just yeah, to show how easy great. this is and uh, okay I'll, I'll grab the I'll move this one let me grab the dolly up there just hang on don't underestimate the value of this tool right here um, and Chris has done a masterful job in the book of explaining the dimensions the angles uh, he even shows how to how to make a jig uh, a jig on the ground um, to get the angles angles right but everything about this is really critical for ease of function but this is the tool not a you know not a tractor not a garden tractor none of this stuff this is the tool so we come up to it with the dolly and just stick the two shoes under there like that and then you just you just well <clears throat> Yeah, when you're demonstrating, things always go a little bit awry. All right, the point is that that, that breaks the ground, but not enough for the chickens to get out, okay? That's and, true. And, uh, and then we go up here, pull the feeder. The chickens just walk on the ground as we move it forward. And now the chickens have a totally new, they have a totally new salad bar. They have new bedding. So they can, um, they get away from yesterday's manure. They get a new place to lounge. And that took 30 seconds. Yeah. Took 30 seconds. So and then we just go pull the pull the dolly out. Okay. And then you go to the next one, the next one, the next one. The point is that with this little tool, in 60 minutes, without starting an engine, without owning a tractor, one person can move 4,500 chickens in 60 minutes in one hour. And that's canceling your gym membership too. That's canceling you your... That that's right, you're canceling your gym membership. I'm here, this is the poultry pen workout. It's canceling your gym membership. It's canceling your, uh, your, your pharmaceuticals, your vet bills. It's canceling um, most of this, it cancels your predator issues as well because the chickens are completely contained. Weather issues, it, um, it makes sure the chickens are on a, a brand new place every day. And, uh, and it, gives you, it gives you 
the all the positives of pasture without the negatives of weather and predation and all that stuff and yeah and you do this without any machinery except this i mean that's that's the thing you know uh folks that are selling these these big you know these big hoop structures and schooners and all that stuff i mean i'm glad it's on the market and i don't want to denigrate anybody but i can tell you that it makes a big difference whether you have this and a little three hundred dollar shelter versus a seven thousand dollar structure plus a tractor to move it. That, that's a game changer. That's a real, it, the capitalization is a game changer. So I call this my Dave Ramsey solution. <laughs> <laughs> you know, pay as you go, debt free, yeah. and, and, you're just, and you're up and running. And all you gotta do is cancel your Netflix subscription for, yeah. you know, for two months, that's and right. you can build one of these. So brand new, all this, the lumber, aluminum, accoutrements, 300 bucks brand new brand new now that, that's not your labor yeah. but yeah. all you're going to do is not watch tv so your labor so uh so you know don't worry about the labor so you're going to build it yourself and um and the and chris chris understands the engineering behind this yeah. aluminum the, the the aluminum actually uh as a as a metallic Situ thing is different than steel, mm. and maybe he should address that. Yeah, I believe the uh, the mechanical property or material property that we're looking at is emissivity, and the emissivity of aluminum versus steel is about four times different, meaning that it will absorb four times less heat energy than okay. steel would. Okay. So the reflective properties and just the material properties of aluminum. Not only does it make it lighter, half half the weight of steel, but also you get that uh, that heat reflective property. Yeah. So you're not baking your chickens. You're not having baked chicken on a hot summer day. Did you know that, Joel, going into this, or did you get lucky? No, I didn't know that. Going <laughs> I didn't know that going into this. I just knew. I just knew. I want to. I want to kind of switch so we can see these, and it makes a prettier background. Um, I just knew that all the poultry houses, the Tyson, Cargill, Purdue, Poultry, all use aluminum roofing. I didn't know why. Okay. But but we but we well those guys they're not stupid you know, and so uh, and so I, I used aluminum early on. It was available because we've got a lot of poultry houses in the area. It was available and, you know, uh, I figured they weren't stupid. There was a reason to use it, so. Hey, you, you know what else people are canceling because of this? Their town jobs. <laughs> yeah. People are canceling their town jobs. Absolutely. So, so speak to us about the opportunity sure. that's in one of these pens. Okay, so in one of these shelters, we put 75 birds in and we normally take at least 70 out. I mean, you're gonna lose one to something, to, you know, anything from pneumonia to a crippled leg to whatever. So let's just assume we take 70 birds out. So our average price is $15 a chicken. Uh, gross, gross. So 15 times seven is $1,050. Is that right? Yeah, $1,050 per shelter. And each shelter runs four rotations a summer. So it's six months. So the birds are in here for five weeks. So if you run four rotations of five weeks, that's 20 weeks times $1,050 is um, is $4,200. $4,200 per season <laughs> through one of these just one. shelters. Just one. Just one. It's not that much harder to do two. No, it's no. Not it, double. <laughs> it's not double. No, it's not double because the cost the cost is in walking out to the field. Yeah. You know. So if you're gonna if you're gonna walk out there, you might as well you might as well two or three. Um, uh, or 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 50. <laughs> so these things uh, these things add up. And then from a from a land perspective, we run an average of 500 birds per acre. In other words, if you add up the square footage per day times the five weeks times the chickens, uh, it, it comes out to one acre every 500 birds. So every every 500 birds we're covering an acre. Okay. Well, 500 times 15 is 7,500 dollars per acre. So for a small acreage, 
you know, yes, does this take labor? Sure it does, but there's no free lunch. The fact is, you, you can't do that with beef cows. You can't do that with sheep. You can't do that with meat goats. You could probably, you might be able to do it with selling um, uh, first rate, expensive raw milk dairy, let's say. You might be able to do it with, with raw milk dairy. But there aren't very many things with livestock that you can turn that kind of, I mean, we're, we're approaching, you know, garden type income. Um, and so, so for a small acreage to be able to turn an income on a small acreage, you know, the, the small animal, yes, it takes more labor per acre, but you can quit your town job. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot to, lot to recommend. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing about these things. This is an amazing opportunity. Okay, are you on? Uh, ABC one two. It's not on. He could be out of a battery. No, it fell out of my. Oh, did it? it? Fell off my back end when I just dropped. Let's hold it down. There we go. So these are what we call the hairpins. So these are for the rabbits, and um, so we move these uh, once a day. And these are so light that they don't require a dolly. They just slide. I mean, a you know. A 10 year old yeah. can move these real easily. The hairpin and the Millennium Feather Net are probably the two models that we have here that are the, the longest evolution. Uh, I mean, years, decades in getting to where we are today. I could tell you stories for a long time about all the, the trial things that we did, but when we, when we finally came to this, uh, it really worked. Well, why did you start with rabbits? And why did you insist on putting them on grass? Well, Daniel, this was Daniel's entrepreneurial project. We're, we're big believers in child entrepreneurship. And uh, so he started with rabbits when he was eight. And um, he, he, you know, my older brother had had rabbits when we were kids. He saw those rabbit shelters hanging up in the rafters of the barn, you know. Ah, I think rabbits would be fun for me. We had, we had some friends that were moving from a, from a, a, a country a country house rental situation to an apartment in the city and the owner wouldn't let them have animals so they had to have someplace to take their rabbits right when he was eight and about the time he was starting to get interested he said, ah i'll i'll do rabbits so that's how we start and of course everything here is on grass uh, i mean that, that's just that we're you know we're we're a cult on on grass so uh the you know from the get-go the whole idea was so how do we run these you know on grass will they actually mow somebody's lawn well, yeah, you can you can go up here and see where they've been. So we're moving them, you know, we're moving them downhill, and um, so you can see the squares. So you can see the squares where they've been. One, two, three, nice. four. Okay, they're not mowing it like a mower mower, but 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 they're definitely mowing it. You know, you can walk on it. You can walk absolutely. You can walk on it. It's not a golf course, and it's not like cow pies. Yeah. You know, ra rabbit rabbit pellets are not like cow pies. It's almost cute. Yeah, it is cute. <laughs> you heard it. He said it. It's, it's like it's like it's like that you spread it's, it's like you spread breakfast cereal. You know, right. and out here. Right on it. It's not burning it like this. No. Like the no. corn is cross. That's right. That's really right. That. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Because the rabbit manure is is not is uh, not. Because rabbits pee. How much can they eat from the land? Dan Daniel figures that they're picking up uh, at least 70% of their diet on the land. So we figured it up one day just for fun and figured up that one acre of grass put through rabbits is worth about $50,000. Yeah. So speaking of dollars, <laughs> what's your input on this thing? What, what, what can one of these pens do and by way of cost and by way of uh, yeah so so yeah so we bring them out at uh, at six weeks they get weaned and then we dress them at 12 so they're in here for six weeks mm -hmm. and um, and so you know uh, each rabbit 
is, is uh, sells for about 25 bucks. Um, they're about eight bucks a pound times three pounds. So for sake of discussion, well, for sake of discussion, we could even just say 20, you know, make it, make it simple. And, um, and so each one's big enough for a litter. And so we can put anywhere from, from, you know, two to eight or even 10, if the litter's real big, we, we, we try to put each litter. That's what this is. This is, this is the bunnies. This is the bunnies of number 45. Okay. That way we can select for genetics. If we want to keep for seat for, for breeding stock, we can we can track the, the litter all the way through to you know to slaughter. So so that's how we identify for genetic selection. So if you figure six weeks a piece, and again, you know, this is a deal like 24 weeks, they can be out here in the summer. So uh, 24 divided by six is four rotations. If you say the average is six bunnies per rotation, that's uh, 24 bunnies. 24 bunnies at $20 a piece is $480 per per one of these. Wow, this could be in somebody's yard. <laughs> absolutely, we we call about a bunny. Absolutely, we call this nook and cranny farming. This is nook and cranny farming. I mean, this is cool because all the infrastructure is portable. Yeah. You can move it from yard to yard. Yeah, yeah. you 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 could, you could do it in a in a suburbs. Yeah. Why you know with chickens and rabbits you could hook together you know two, two three acre suburban backyards. Yeah. And be in the farming business. I've heard that rooster. I don't even know how far away that rooster is, but I've heard him like three times. I haven't heard a thing out of these. Guys. No, they're quiet. That's the beauty of rabbits. They're <laughs> quiet. They're very very so, quiet. Culturally, why don't we eat rabbits? A bam Bambi. <laughs> Thumper, <laughs> Peter Rabbit. And Disney and they're cute. Yeah, Peter <laughs> Rabbit. Nuts. Yeah, yeah. But there are a lot of cultures that do eat rabbit. I mean, yeah. the the British culture certainly does. French. Um, yeah, rabbits are eaten well all over the uh, all yeah. around. But but yeah, they are kind of a, they're a little bit like lamb. They're a little bit of an ethnic ethnic okay. kind of thing. And you got six six rabbits in here. Uh, how many are in here? Are you One, two, three. There's four four in here and they, these were small litters so a litter can be anywhere from you know three or four okay. all the way up to ten okay so i mean we've had we've had ten okay. in there right. and obviously they would mow more okay you know, they would mow more if you had more in there yeah thank you and if there were less they would eat more off the land more of their own food off the land and less supplement yeah you have some supplement right there right in an automatic feeder under the shed, mm -hmm. and then your water. Water, cool. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Thank you. Next up, we are going to go into the racking house. Racking house. This is going to be amazing. That's rabbit chicken. Two. Okay. They're working together. Yeah. This is in the book. The yeah. racking house is in the book. It's in the book. Could somebody scale this down to a garage? Or does it need to be in a high tunnel? Oh, no, it can be in a garage. Yeah, yeah, okay. th this can be scaled down as small as okay. as small as you want to make it, yeah. So Joe, give us a tour, tell us what's going on here. Well, what's going on here is, uh, first of all, you start with deep bedding. I mean, deep bedding, okay? Um, foot. <laughs> Wow. It's 18 inches. It's way, I'm not, I don't know where. <laughs> it's way down there, okay? But here's what I want you to, if you if you feel that, that's warm. Oh, wow. Feel that? Whoa. Okay. So that's actually, that's, this, this whole thing is actually a very, very gentle composting going on. But it's, not even, it's not even wet. No, it's not even wet. But that's that's the that's the microbial activity that's going on uh, in the bedding. So the idea is that the uh, the chickens aerate the bedding under the rabbits. Rabbits urinate. They pee. So that adds moisture, and um, and and that actually helps the composting. 
Um, I mean, it's actually better right under the rabbit. Um, you know, if you if you go over here, <clears throat> see, you can see that there's better. And now, now feel, now feel that. Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, sm <laughs> smell, smell that. Boy, I really trust you, don't I? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can put milk on that and eat it for breakfast. It is. I mean, that is fan. And, and, yeah, micro. And, and so, so um, if you didn't listen, if you didn't have the chickens here, in one week it would stink in here. Okay. Because the rabbits are pooping and peeing, and if it just sits there. Yeah. There's no decomposition. So the chickens keep this aerated. This is the best compost we make on the farm. Is it? Right here. It's, it's gentle, gentle warmth, long, multi-species. This, this is... So how do you, when do you harvest this? So what we do here, sometime around Thanksgiving, 1st of December, all of this will move to the hoop houses okay. and pigs will okay. go in here. And that way, the rat, that way, all this fragile rabbit and chicken stuff won't freeze. And, um, and pigs will go in here. They can take any kind of temperature. And they, they will do the final heavy, heavy turning in the spring. We'll clean it all out with a front end loader, put in a new 18 inches of chips, start the whole thing over. Oh, so only load it once a year? Only, empty. only load it once a year and empty it once Where? a year. The permaculture concept of of stacking here, yeah. so you've got two enterprises. You've got chickens on the, on the ground and rabbits up above. You're using cubic footage, not just four linear footage. And so we can actually produce more volume per linear foot than even a factory farm, but none of the densities is high enough to kick in pathogenicity. So you can have the chickens at, you know, at 70%, the rabbits at 70%, 70% for 70%, 140%, we can have 140% production, but not, but, but not have the single density of, of a single species at a density that actually creates issues. So, I mean, you, I mean, you notice there's a lot of animals in here, but there's no smell, zero. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can eat a sandwich in here. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's, it's fine. I notice you don't have perches. No. Is, why? The chickens just sleep on the floor. Yeah. You know, you know, look, half the chickens, you have to train, you know, a lot of chickens don't, you have to train them to a perch. I got onto this a long time ago, I asked an old timer, I, I said, you know, I built this beautiful perch, the first racking house we had, I built a big perch in there for them. Well, only about 25% of the chickens used it. I went to the neighbor, I said, what's it with the chickens? And he said, well, well you, ha you have to teach them to be on a perch. I said, well, I got to teach them to be on a perch and they must not really need it. So they, they just, they just sleep here and, and, and they're fine. spread their manure too. Yes. They're not just pooping under the perch, half their manure load. And That's right. That's right. So this is nice. So, okay, let's, let's scale this or, okay, uh, a, a garage, garage, 500 square feet. I mean, maybe it's too much to try to do math in our head there, but how, how many square feet is this? Uh, this is, um, Six. I think this is 40. 48 by 30. This is 48, 48 by, by 30. 30. So, so it's 1,500 so square, square feet. So somebody's got a garage 500 square feet. Yeah. What, what can they expect to get in here? How many chickens? Uh, 500 How square feet, yeah. We, 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 try to, we try to not put the chickens in more dense than, than uh, one per three square feet. Okay. So you could easily put, you know, 150 chickens. <laughs> get the car out of the garage. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And then... Um, and then the rabbits could go in, uh, you know, every every breeding pair. If you had a 500 square foot thing, uh, garage, um, you know, you could put, and if you have a, an alley to walk in, you know, yeah. assuming, yeah. Let, let's say you want to cover half of it with rabbits, 250 square feet uh, divided by six would be 40. Yeah, four times six, 240. Yeah, so you could have 40, 40 breeding does in a garage. 40 does, 150 chickens. And, and, eat, and eat, eat, if each doe, if each doe gives you uh, four litters a year, four litters, an average of six, well just, oh that's 20, let's say 25. Yeah. Our, our, goal, our goal is 25 bunnies a year per doe. 25 times 40 is 1,000, all right? 
1,000 worth $25 a piece what? is $25,000. <laughs> and then if you're, if, if, you're 100, if you're 150 chickens, just say average 50% oh, yeah. production, 50% yeah. production, that's uh, four dozen eggs a day times seven, uh, times seven days a week is 28 dozen a week. Uh, times 50, 50 weeks in a year is uh, 1,500 dozen yeah. of eggs at $5 a dozen is 7,500. So we've got 25,000 with the rabbits. Now, 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 that's, on, that's only the, 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 we haven't yeah. raised the bunnies. So it, well, no, 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 no. Oh. We, we haven't raised the bunnies. We're assuming the bunnies okay. are out in your yard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, we're yeah. assuming your yeah. bunnies are in your yard, okay? Yeah. So, so um, we got 25,000 and then we've got 7,500 with the eggs. That's $32,500 in a 500 square foot garage. Dave, okay. what are we waiting on? Get the car out of the garage. Get the car out. You, you'll be getting a new car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so great. yeah, this is, this, is, uh, this is very, very doable. Yeah. Very, very yeah, doable. Good. Next up, Millennial Featherhead. Joe, tell us about it. <laughs> well, this again has a long, long evolution. Um, but when we started with commercial layers, we essentially used the broiler shelters with nest boxes tucked under the under the back hood with a with a flip up door on them, and uh, put 50 birds in there, moved them along, and we thought this is pretty this is pretty cool. And then we got visited by a couple from Australia, and this was back when this when this netting was just starting to come out. They were just this is uh, you know 20, 25, almost 30 years ago. This netting was just starting to be to be uh, created, and this couple from Australia came and visited, and they looked at, at you know what we were doing, and they said, obsolete, obsolete. <laughs> well, I don't like to be told I'm obsolete. Who wants to be told they're obsolete? And so, you know, I resisted that. They, they told me about this netting. They said, you really need to try this netting. Well, I'd invested a lot of uh, emotional and uh, time and energy, and we were on the front page of Acres USA. I mean, you know, you don't just walk away from, a, a, you know, emotionally as much as economically. I mean, we had 20 shelters. You know, that's $6,000 worth of, worth of uh, infrastructure. So anyway, um, took me three years. And I finally said, you know, I'm going to try that just to prove that it doesn't work. <laughs> and so I got, I got a roll of this, uh, the Premier netting from Premier. And, um, and I set it up around one of the chicken shelters. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then stuck a five gallon bucket under the corner to let the chickens out. And I sat there and watched it not work. In five minutes, I knew he was right. <laughs> we, were, we were completely obsolete. Um, a Michael and Joyce Plane from Gundaroo, Australia is the couple. And I knew we were obviously, I walked to the house, I said, Teresa, Michael and Joyce were right. We were completely obsolete. And so then we started the multi-year thing of, well, what kind of structure, what kind of shelter do you make? And of course we started with kind of a hoop house idea. But the problem with the hoop house is that all of the structural integrity is down low because there isn't any in the hoops. Well, when you put all your structural integrity down low, you got all this, you know, angles and, and, and stuff down that you trip over, fall over, catch chickens on, all this stuff. So really, this is Daniel's, this is Daniel's final, final idea. And it's just fantastic. Um, it's essentially a scissor truss for an A-frame on skids and because of the design all of the structural integrity is up off the ground so there's nothing on the ground to trip over or catch a chicken when you move it and because there's there's nothing there's nothing going perpendicular to your flow and so it's very chicken friendly it's very person friendly 
It's very wind. I mean, the first the first hoop when we made, we got it all up, pulled up in the field, put chickens in it. We had a windstorm that night. The next morning, I went up, and the hoop houses were completely destroyed. Um, and then, we, of course, we rebuilt them better, and then we kept running over chickens because we had all these little angles and stuff down close to the ground. So this answered answered all of those things. This structure is now I don't know what 15 years old. We haven't done anything to it. Um, it's taken, you know, 100 mile an hour wind storms. It's got a low center of gravity. It's extremely strong. 40, 40 people can stand up inside of it. You can pull it down a gully, through a creek, over a, a hilltop, uh, turn it in pinwheels. It's just incredibly uh, uh, strong. Just so, one regular farm tractor can move it? Yeah, yeah, just a regular farm tractor okay. can move it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so there we are. I it's, can it's I can really hear slick. the people freaking out though. There's no walls. No. What walls. about the predators? Well, the the netting, the electrified okay. netting, keeps the predators out. And at night, no owls getting well, somebody it, on it, the it side. Might they go in here and sleep. They have roost. You can see the roost in uh, there. Uh -huh. So at night they go in and sleep. Nice. And um, it it just works. So how many chickens do you have in there? A little over a thousand. Okay, and you keep them out here all winter, or do no, they go up to the hoop no, houses? No, no, come, uh, come Thanksgiving, roughly, uh, first of December, they'll go into the hoop okay. houses. And so 1,000 chickens. Is this one paddock that we're standing in one yeah. day? Uh -huh. so Quarter you, acre. Quarter you'll, acre. You'll move them all the way. Where are, you going, where are they going next? They're going, they're going up there. So oh, they're going that way. We're already set up with the next, oh, you with set the next up. circle up there. So we're that's the idea. You set up the way. next paddock, and then it's there's no disaster. They, they, there's no. They still can't get out. That's right. They you still can't. Yeah, you set up. You set up, you set up yeah. a contiguous circle, yeah. and then you open it up. You move through. You close this one. Yeah. You pick up this one. Move it here. So how do you herd a chicken? Oh, uh, they they, go they, they learn to come with They're you. They're just gonna come. They learn to come with you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They 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 want new you know new ground new bugs new grass. Do you have uh, to implement a pig board or anything? Or no 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 they. I mean. Initially, when you start, yeah. you have to kind of work with them, okay. uh, or, or even or even leave the old one up. Just leave it for a few hours until they finally wander in. Um, but no, one, once they get once they get used to it, they know very much what's going on, and they're, they're crowded up there. They're ready to they're ready to go. So, but it, isn't it beautiful? That's so beautiful. Look at them. And that's a beautiful structure. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. A, uh, a hoop house. And so, 1,000 chickens, probably a little easier for you. Half <laughs> production. How many, how, how, how many dollar bills is that a year? Yeah, so, yeah. Maybe so, it's not easier. Uh, yeah, so, so you know, if, if you're getting uh, on, on a rolling flock average of 50% production, um, 1,000 birds are going to give you, you know, 40 dozen a day. Uh, that's conservative. Um, so 40 dozen a day at five bucks is $200 a day. Times seven is $1,400 a week. Times 50 is um, $1,400 times 50 is uh, $70,000. Seven, $70,000. Cool. And and this this essentially is on a three day. We move it every three days, so a quarter acre every three days means we cover one acre every twelve. So a six acre a six acre field gives you a seventy two day cycle. So with the with these we can touch that three times a year. Unlike the broilers, where it's a lot more intensive, a lot less intensive here. So we can cover. One three. So this is roughly a six-acre model, a six-acre model with a thousand chickens, with a 72-day rest, um, generating somewhere between 50 and 70 thousand a year. But remember, six uh, uh, for a hundred days, they're in the hoop houses. Yeah. So this is not a total year-round, year-round thing. Yeah. And people could scale this. Oh, you can make this much, much smaller. Yeah, the ang the angles again in the book, Chris points out the angles so that this can be scaled smaller if you want to scale it smaller. Hey, do you know of anybody that scaled it smaller? Yes. Okay. Yes. Nice. Yeah, there have been. Uh huh. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. Thank you guys. Yeah.
That's it. All right, Wait. they're here. They're here. Let's go. Jason just saw the logistics truck go by. Oh my word! Did, did it go by <laughs> here? Yeah. It went I, I missed it. I, Does I, that mean that they're here? They're here. Yeah. That, oh my! That, that's the book. Stuff. Hurry, get in. He's gonna leave us. <laughs> Man, your first book, my first forward. Oh, Look you that. there he is. Nice picture. Aw. <laughs> Christmas morning in here with two little boys. It's nice. I mean, it sits open. Uh huh. Yeah. So it's in. It's in. What this is called um, landscape format. So it's it's longer than it is high, which means when you open it up, it it'll you know it it'll naturally sit open. There. So you can ah. take it out. You can take it to your shop, you know, mm. and you can lay it out. So nice. Chris did the plans, you did the commentary. Yes. Like just to show you guys, we'll walk you through the Eggmobile here. We start out with an intro from Joel, kind of explaining history, giving you a lot of the ins and outs and why the design is the way it is. Then we move into kind of your basic tools. That's so you have so an cool. idea of what you need uh, for the project. You could also put this in a printer easy enough, the yep. way it lays out. And we kind of wanted it to be like checkbox format, like yeah. you just go through and mentally check off everything you need. Then you got break your hardware. Down. Tell you, you try to break it down. Nails, screws, that is cool. other hardware, nuts, bolts. Is that one to one ratio? Uh, not everything. Not this, but maybe that. Uh, we tried to get things as close to one to one as we could. Yeah. Um, Extraneous materials, and then we got the cut list here. And we tell that you like cool. two by six by ten foot. You need sixteen of them, and then out of those you cut sixteen out of one one oh four, and then your waste is in red here. I dare your... say if Joel was going to build another one, he's probably going to look at this book. Huh? Oops. <laughs> Even Joel. <laughs> How many of those two by fours again? We give you plywood, your metal cut lists. That's cool. With an Eggmobile, the beauty of it is building with the materials you've got available and being creative with it too. Mm. So we don't want to pigeonhole you to doing it exactly our way. If you're one of those innovative types, we wanted to give you the freedom yeah. there. So Joel went through and he explained all of the most important aspects of like ventilation, the importance of slatted floor, square footage, how many birds per square foot, nest boxes, how many birds per nest box. So, I mean, even if you weren't building this particular infrastructure, as, as I started seeing what Chris, what Chris had in mind, I realized this is valuable just for, for basic principles of construction for ah. any do-it-yourself, any self-reliance. Uh, th project, project that you're, maybe you're making a trellis, maybe yeah. you're, I mean, whatever it is, but the, these are basic, um, you know, uh, uh, build principles. It's even a way to learn some terminology. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And show them this, Joel. That's, that's really the gate. Really is handy. This, yeah. Is this a pig gate? This, this is just how to make a, a gate, a oh, wooden gate, nice. like for a corral or a sorting pin or whatever. Uh, again, you know, you can go down to the store and 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 you know spend one hundred and twenty dollars on a gate, but if you've got ah. access to some lumber, you can build your you know you can build your own gate. And this is the basic you know design of a, a build your own gate. So there's there's all sorts of notches. There's the simple metal strap. There's a board notch to to have a you know a gate latch. Uh, there's a gravity latch. Uh, and we have these all over. So basically, you know, a gravity latch is where you want something real fast, like in a in a catch in a catch pin. Um, and, th and this is a homemade head gate. I mean, those things you can spend a thousand dollars on a head gate, and we've had ours for 50 years, and I just made it based on Teresa's grandfather's model, and uh, you can make your you know you can make your own. Make your own simple head gate, and he's got how to make the 
notches and the angles and you know I just slap stuff together Chris makes it real pretty <laughs> right these hay racks we're gonna need to be doing that before the winter you got it in your book I know man uh, we talk about uh, winter hay uh, like winter hay feeding hay storage how to calculate how much hay you need wow. for a given winter yeah we go and over how, and how much space then how much cubic footage you need to store that much hay I like it this is how pigs move and flow so you've got diagrams on you know how pigs move and flow um, I like it pig handling I need this chapter Show I need this chapter on my way home I need that ramp into the yeah there you the go trailer it's not just a building there's book. no no there's it's not management in there. It, it is it is it's a lifetime of lessons truly. yeah yeah it's it's truly it's truly capturing all of our practical experience it's in a in one true. in one book here's the rabbit rabbit They're giving people such a short shortcut because how many years is this in the development 50 60 50 <laughs> yes you see 50 60 years yeah yeah a stack, stack of hay wagon. Yeah. A stack of hay wagon. The art too. The yeah. art of loading oh, hay yeah. wagon. Yeah, Not a very much a, a, a art and a skill. Yeah. Yep. Nice. That's cool. But you know, a lot of first-time homesteaders, yeah. they, they they've never done this, you know. And then you wagon falls off, and bale falls on your child, and you know, it's just That's so. A big thing. Yeah. You guys thought of everything. Well, we didn't think. I mean, there are a few things we didn't put. We just we just ran out of. Yeah, you, you can't. You can't go over. You, you can't make. No, you can't make it everything. <laughs> but th this is a breakdown of how the Plasson waterers work. So you get a, you know, a. Oh, nice. Shooting. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Sixty years of work, and then how how long y'all been working on this? Two thousand hours. Two thousand hours. Nice. That's just you. That's just me. That's just you. Wow. All Joel's time and Jennifer's time. Yeah. Well, may you be blessed with... And all the years of trial and error to get, <laughs> yeah. This, yeah. get the conference. May you be blessed with clearing this out for yes. another run soon. Yes. Wendy. Let me see. Let Wendy. me see. Let me see. Oh, my gosh. Let me put on my glasses. <gasps> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That's what, I was, that's what I was expecting from him. <laughs> You're the better reaction right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Shut up. Can you believe that it's here? <gasps> Don't you want to sleep with it? <laughs> <laughs> and just rock it and Sounds like it. she's put some work in too. I have not put any work oh, in you right now. <laughs> no. But I have learned about this same thing for so long. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I have. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to put a little baby carrier and just <laughs> carry it around. It's beautiful. It is. It is. It really is. Oh it's my gosh. Daniel's in the office. Look. Ta -da! <gasps> Shut up. It's here. <laughs> we can stop hearing about it. Just kidding. Just kidding. Next. Sorry, sorry for not jumping for joy. <laughs> yeah, no. Bad back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty fancy. Nice. All color coded with the idiot proof tabs. Very nice. Very fancy. We, we need a windy reaction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tell him to shut up. She got to tell him to shut up. Come on. No, no. Daniel wants to know if it fits. Oh, please tell me it fits. <laughs> That's why you get the specs of the book before you have to order all this other stuff. It's going to squeeze in there. <laughs> it's tight. Yeah. It's tight. Who's packing them? Uh, not me. I'm out. Daniel's Joel's son. He's so practical. He's already making sure it fits in the package. Oh, He's ready for it to get out. If it, if it, if it <laughs> doesn't, that's just got the it. only reason it is does, because his wife's about to if get it here. If it doesn't oh, okay. fit in the package, it doesn't ship anywhere. Oh, what? There's going to be a nuclear reaction. We <laughs> need to get new mailers by the time Look, look he's already and he's like, bossy. Yeah. yeah. I'm She's like, he's like, it fits. It did, it fit. Oh, it, it fit. did? It fit. That's good. It was tight. It, it's it a fit. big book. It's a big it's book. It's a big book. Big book. I'm getting my autograph copy right now. 
And for those of you who are watching this, the first thousand that this order through us. the first autograph right yep, here. Yep, yep. So how long is it gonna take you to sign a thousand things? We're thrilled to get this information yeah. out there. We think it's, it's so just gonna be uh, a so game good. changer for hopefully thousands oh. thousands of people. It's worth 10 times, 100 times yeah. what cover price. Chris, appreciate awesome. it, buddy. Congratulations, buddy. Thank Thanks you. for making me a part. Okay, and this will be my copy, sign, <laughs> sign mine. All right, cool. Well, Jason, how'd it go? That was good, man. It went so good. Yeah, perfect weather. And they locked down the info. This book is amazing. Yeah. The you gonna get one? Yeah. Okay, sweet. You're gonna get one. Man, that was an amazing moment. It's absolutely incredible that we were here. We wrapped up our tour. The books came at that moment. This is like crazy, like pinch yourself. We got to see Joel Salatin. Uh, receive one of his books, see his books for the first time, and then got to meet Chris. Guys, that book is worth its weight in gold. Absolutely. I'm honored that I am um, been asked by Joel to help sell that thing. So, this is like before Amazon, guys. It's not going to Amazon until 2020. These things are ready to ship. I've got all, I said, Joel, I said, we're gonna do this. Let's do this big. Let's give folks bonuses. Let's put in tiers. Guys, I'm giving you a free surprise motivational sticker. It's done, it's coming, it's, it's going inside the book. We're gonna do a live webinar with Joel Salatin himself after the sale, guys. You have until Sunday, what is that? I don't know, I'll flash the date up on this. What else? Oh, I'm giving you a bonus video. We also went around these structures and Chris and Joel some talked about some building ideas, some building tips, some things to think about when you build it. It would be a great companion for this book because pictures and words are amazing and it's really all you need, but that video will just be a little bit of icing on top to help you build these things. Those are some of the bonuses. I think there's, is there more? I don't know. There's some tiers if you want to go. If you just want more of Joel, anyway, check that out. Link is in the description.